have the um, finan financial help for uh, for having him coming here. Right. Uh, else he would have come, and certainly would, he would have spoken. Oh yeah. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. He would be glad to uh, to do so, but yeah. unfortunately, it wasn't possible. Okay. Maybe next year. Hope Maybe so. Year. Hopefully. Right, so I'll just <laughs> okay. So um, thank you, everyone, for coming to the open game room. This is the last talk of the day. Uh, running with uh, the Godot engine. Thank you so much. So hello everyone and welcome to this presentation where I will be talking today about Escoria framework which is a Libre point and click framework using Godot engine that allows you to make adventure point and click games. So first of all what is Escoria? Escoria is basically a set of tools and scripts b built on top of Godot engine. Godot engine I will be to to talking about it in the uh, in the next slide the aim this framework aim, uh, aims at providing a basic workflow for a whole team to build a, uh, an adventure graphic game uh, using based on top of it to do so it provides uh, multiple tools such as the ESC scripting language that I will be talking a bit later too and just know that it's meant to be a tool for uh, either for teams to adapt and build on top of it or for indie developers uh, in the and uh, also alone. So what is Korea is not. First of all, it's not an all-in-one product, such as you can know with Visionaire or Adventure St Game Studio, which is an, uh, a complete solution to, uh, that allows you to, uh, to create such games. This is not exactly the, um, the, uh, the idea. So it's not exactly a user-friendly product. You will have to adapt and know the framework, know Godot Engine, because you will be using uh, Godot Engine extensively. It's also not a make your game without programming solution. So it's not like RPG Maker stuff uh, that allows you to put your assets and just move them by clicking and dragging them uh, the way you want. It's not exactly that. Godot Engine allows you to do so, but uh, this is not exactly the purpose of um, Escoria framework. It's built on top of Godot Engine, which uh, some of you uh, may already know, uh, and if not, you're welcome to, uh, to our booth uh, in the H building, which is a full-featured engine, 2D and 3D, that allows you to, m to create your games. It's not a library uh, that, uh, because it takes over your entry point, main loop, inputs, shaders. It allows you to create the whole stuff that you put into your game and uh, organized your uh, your stuff in nodes uh, into your, the scene tree model that you have an illustration here by uh, the dear Tim Sweeney from uh, from Epic and Rio uh, who had a, con um, a little uh, comparison between the um, between the uh, the way the scene is the, uh, is organized in other engines and the one in, in Godot as you can see here uh, in other engines you put all your assets in a big ass scene and organize them uh, them inside. In Godot, you just create your scene and you split them in sub scenes, which you don't, you split up again in, in uh, even smaller sub scenes that you can use in other scenes. So you uh, you have scenes reusable and easier to maintain. That's the, uh, the basic idea. And of course, uh, Godot Engine is fully open source and MIT licensed. So uh, back to uh, Escoria framework again. There is al already one professional game that uses Escoria framework. Uh, it began it, it began uh, with the, de the development of the demo in 2012, uh, showing a classic point-and-click gameplay. Uh, and just to, uh, just to say that most of the team was, uh, for most of the members of, uh, of the development team, it was the first time making a game. Uh, they uh, they had six core members and there were 12 at the t uh, in total. Finally, the game was kick-started in November tw uh, 2014 and it barely made at uh, 30k. Fi uh, and uh, the game was finally published and it's now, uh, it now shipped since about one year on Steam. Just a word about tools in game development. Every game whatever the, the, the genre or, or the type, uh, when it comes to a certain complexity, will have its custom tools. That's the case with adventure tools, uh, adventure games, sorry. But when it comes to professional teams making a game, you generally distinguish two main groups of, 
of people, first the artists and then the, the game designers. So we, uh, we need, in this case, a tool that allows both groups to, uh, to, uh, to work together. So we need a tool that allows speci specialization for the artists and for, uh, and for the game designers, and also assigning tasks away from the, from the programmers. So you don't have bottlenecks uh, having programmers, n n artists, or game designers needing some specific tools, waiting for the programmers to program them, and uh, ha having to wait for the programmers to finish the, the job before they can, at last, start into uh, the work. So the programmers have to build the framework first, which is the purpose of his career. Programmers solve the, their problem with the code, and the code have bugs. So we uh, want to avoid having to create code the, the, as much as possible during the game development process. Also, programmers are 25% more expensive, according to Gamma Sutra, which means uh, it's, it may be interesting to avoid uh, using them as, uh, as much as possible. As an example, yeah. <laughs> Um, Dublin Desa has, 20, uh, has 15k assets, which means we, uh, there is a really need in, in this kind of game, adventure games, uh, for artists to, uh, to put their assets and creation in, uh, in the game. So what are the artists need exactly? They need to be responsible for the creation of and the usage of their assets from the beginning, from the blank page to the, uh, to the ending game until the game is completely finished. So yeah, they ha need to have the control of the use of their assets into the game engine. That's the purpose of uh, a Godot engine, which allows that. They have, uh, they, ha they have no dependency on programmers, on, uh, almost. In the case of video game artists, they are not simple artists uh, on blank pages. They, also, uh, they of course, draw their, their images and textures and, uh, and 3D models, but not just for, uh, for the beauty of it. They have to use it in the video game. That's their medium. Uh, so they can express themselves uh, on the medium of a video game. If they can, and if the, uh, the, uh, the environment allows them to do so, then you get a better product in the end. On the case of game designers, the, um, their needs is a bit unclear. They need to access the, impl the influence of the game logic, uh, but not too much, because they, uh, they will add much much thing and much thing and even more and the game the game will never uh, the game development will never end but they need a tool that is complex enough enough to allow us to surprise us and be able to uh, to make things that we don't think the framework or the the game engine would be able to do basically they need level design tools to uh, to allow them to build uh, the scenes the rooms uh, and stuff like that also dialogue uh, dialogue writing in the form of dialogue trees and cutscene sp uh, scripting not as movie script as ex uh, uh, not as computer script that is no sor source code we want them to write a story and make the, uh, make the gameplay upon it in the case of level design, you can, uh, we can use a Godot engine uh, with Escoria to do so. It's a bit similar to the artist because they can put their, the assets together to create and organize the, uh, the elements of the, mat, uh, of the map or the room uh, by creating a technical specification and keep it flexible. The engine tools allow that. So they, have for, uh, they are forced to learn the tool and it allows them in later to keep the edit and test cycle very fast. About the uh, ESC language, which is, uh, this is the language that is provided by uh, Escoria framework, and that, uh, that is used for cutscene scripting. It's made mostly for the dialogues uh, and uh, reactions of the, uh, the NPCs to some actions of the, of the player. Uh, and it's uh, generally, uh, generally uh, the, uh, tr the translation of the, of the game history. <coughs> it's completely in independent of, uh, of the engine frames. We don't want the, uh, the game designer to take care of about the technical stuff uh, and take care about uh, how, it how it shows, does it take time, do we have the, t the time, uh, how many frames per second, etc. We don't care about that and le let's, just, let's just them, they just have to do their job and the technical part is the, the programmer's part. 
this language allows the description of complex dialog tr dialog trees. In that, it's simply a basic logic workflow. Since it's not Turing complete, it does not provide any operator, no f uh, for loops, uh, no uh, no if statement, uh, and so on. It only manages boolean values to do the job, and it's sufficient. It's enough easy for them to be able to, be able to write what they need, and uh, in powerful enough to do uh, to do uh, this kind of adventure adventure game. Uh, just for the story, uh, Mr. Tim Schafer, a creator well known for uh, Day of the Tentacle games uh, and also Grim Fandango at the, in the LucasArts games, uh, visited the team members of the Duck Mendoza game, and uh, when he was presented with the ESC language, had these words: it, how, "Wow, it looks just like scum." <laughs> So uh, again, about, about the ESC language, it is really meant for, no, for non-programmers. Game designers are not always programmers. They need to control the game logic in complex ways, complex ways, just to push the limits and allow them to um, for, allow them for better creation. But not too complex because if if you add more complexity, then you you, are, you can add more bugs. And if uh, you need uh, s such comp complexity, then uh, you sh uh, you should give this jo this task to the the programmer itself and let him do the the job. But uh, in that way, the programmer should just keep his eye on the on the project and be just um, a frame around the creators, not be an obstacle. And what everyone needs in the in the task of creation of adventure games here is always to keep a version of the data runnable at all times. You don't want to have the, the game created in the editor, then uh, start it over, uh, start with the compilation, testing, remark the bugs, correct, recompile, and so on multiple times until the, the job is done. So that's the purpose here of, the, of Godot Engine again, because there is no such compilation process. Another advantage of the of Godot engine here uh, with Escoria is that the, the scenes are independent uh, with each other. That is, you can run one scene alone, so the team uh, the team can be split up in, the, in uh, to work on the different scenes, and each scene is uh, is meant to be a little game in the, in itself, and the whole scenes the whole set of scenes put together gives the final game at the end. Uh, just a word about user-friendly uh, user versus pro productive question. This frame framework here was made for a professional team. It has been released un, uh, in the MIT license uh, very recently, but it was meant for a professional team, which get paid money, of course, and they absolutely, absolutely don't care about having a pretty UI uh, and a magnificent tool that, uh, that are, sh are shiny and uh, so easy to use or a steep learning curve. And if they do, they, are get, they get paid money to not care. So it's up to you, the, um, the programmer, to make it easy for them to use your, uh, your framework so they can be productive and you don't have to convince them to use it. In such aesthetics and UI, do have a value, but the value of the uh, of the team uh, that creates the game is productivity and not user friendliness. That's why we uh, we focused <coughs> they focused on the use of uh, on the creation of the framework using Godot Engine and not having a whole solution all in one. To conclude, um, the tools are very important to allow all the programmers to work and contribute to the game together during the whole process. The programmer ha has, to be, um, has to be just a frame around the, around the core team. It's not, uh, it's not the entry, entry point for any task of the, uh, of the, uh, of the whole team. Because uh, uh, in this case, it would act as a, bot as a bottleneck, which we want to avoid. The, to the tools for artists are generally straightforward, and most engine provides them. So you want to make artists firstly use them and make programmers out of their way only you know, help them when they when they need it not having the, the artist go to the programmer 
Finally, the tools for the game designers are a bit trickier. They can use the same, but it's all effectively a middle ground between the programmer and the artist. So you have to find a, go a good balance, and that's the, uh, the idea between the use of Godot, uh, uh, of Godot engine. Thank you. I just wanted to add that uh, tomorrow and, uh, and the day after we will ha be having the first GodotCon uh, here in Brussels, uh, which will take, pl take place at the hackerspace uh, hacker uh, near the center of, of uh, Brussels. So you're all well welcome. Uh, if you want to join us, we will be talking about Godot, uh, add contributions, talk about the, the new documentation, uh, crash courses m maybe. It's, uh, so you are you are the welcome if you, uh, if you want. If you have any questions now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In a point that I'm thinking, the the logic and interactions are very well defined. So the programmer being a bottleneck, like kind of a scope situation, like maybe a special scene in the game. Well. You you don't have to, to worry about the, um, about the interaction because they are all um, managed directly by the, um, by the framework first that goes into the, into the Godot engine, uh, which, go, uh, which is uh, the second layer. So you absolutely don't, absolutely don't have to worry about it. Uh, left click, for example, uh, manages the movements of the, of the characters. The actions are already ma managed also, and you just have to uh, you just have to take care about the, the elements that you put on the, on the screen and the actions are connected um, very easily using the framework. You just have to connect the scripts, the, con uh, the correct scripts into your, uh, your, uh, your object ele uh, elements in your scene and uh, the framework does the rest. My question was uh, actually like do you have any advice uh, on how to avoid this bottleneck in other types of games, not only when I think? Well, if you need an extension about the, the framework, right? Sorry, can you repeat the questions? Because um, the microphone can't pick up the audience. Can you just repeat what the question is? Oh, well, uh, you're, you're talking about the, um, the inter interaction and uh, the fact that you, you need to um, manage more things that the, uh, the framework uh, could actually do. Right. Then in this case, you can e extend the, um, the Escoria framework very easily because it's developed in uh, GDScript, which is the, uh, the inner lang language, scripting language of Godot engine. So you simply, uh, you can of course adapt the, um, the, inner scr the scripts included in the, the Escoria frameworks to fit your needs, if it's needed, of course, yeah. Yes? Uh, when you design uh, features for game designers to kind of custom behaviors and conditions, uh, how do we decide on how complex you make, you make them? And does it have an um, impact on the game design itself? No, um, uh, it has no, no impact because it's decided. Uh, <laughs> then, yeah, concerning the, um, concerning the, the decision of. Right, I'm sorry, I'm, I'll ask you to, uh, to repeat again because I almost forgot the question. I, was fo <laughs> <laughs> I focused on the, on the answer, sorry. When you add features for the game designers uh, so they can uh, implement custom behaviors or custom conditions, uh, how do you decide on the complexity? And do you, uh, does it have an, uh, an impact on game design? So da does the, um, the need of, the, uh, of adding the design has an impact of, uh, on the, uh, the others? On the other member of the, of the team, maybe? Do you have to make some systems more simple so game designers can interface with them? No. In a more constructive way? Uh, not, uh, not really. Uh, actually, the, uh, in, the, in this kind of problem, to, to make the things simpler in the, in the framework, the, the framework is designed to be uh, si uh, as simple as possible. So you don't generally have to make things different. You can use it as uh, you can use it as is, uh, and it generally will fit the, uh, the needs of a basic adventure point-and-click point games. So if you if you really have n uh, new new designing needs, it's not a problem. You can add new uh, new scripts if uh, if it's needed. Yes. Um, so looking at the Scoria GitHub repo, uh, it looks like there was uh, this massive first comment five months ago. Yeah. 
than subsequent, uh, 20 more yeah. uh, four months ago. Uh, and then really there's, there's not much activity after that. So I guess it's kind of uh, stable at the moment or where are you planning? So uh, concerning the current state of the, the Escoria frame, framework on the GitHub repo, uh, Effectively, the, the Escoria framework was developed first for the Dog Mendoza game uh, just at, at the beginning of the development. Then it was released and freed open source uh, very re recently. So for now, no, no one uh, is working on it to, uh, to maintain it. I intend to, uh, to work on it and maintain it and add, add some, uh, some new features in it. I worked personally. On a, on a little framework on my on my own before Escoria was out, so I I meant I mean I need to add some of the, of the features I created to simplify some of the um, of, uh, of the stuff uh, that Escoria provides. For example, um, yeah, if you want to uh, to define the the area of the clickable items, uh, you have for the moment in uh, in Escoria you have to use. Um, mask Im uh, images. Godot Engine uh, provides a simple way to avoid this and do everything directly in Godot. So you can avoid having to create uh, image masks of your scene to uh, to allow the user to uh, to select the um, to th select an, uh, an area of the item. Plus, uh, if this area is incorrect, you have to modify this image. If you uh, select and define the area direct, uh, directly in the editor, then you don't need to, to remake the image one more time. That's the idea of uh, things I want to simplify and other stuff I have ideas on, especially for the creation of Escoria scripts, uh, ESC scripts, which are currently text-based. <coughs> uh, I think we can, uh, I think I'm able to, uh, to create a tool that allows you to uh, make your dialog trees uh, like gra graph-based. I created this, uh, s the start of, uh, of a work of, uh, for my own pr uh, project, which is not finished yet, but I intend to, ma uh, to make it uh, and put it into, uh, into a Scoria framework. That was a question what here. are the system requirements? I think you need a pretty fast graphical workstation to, to run the work. Yeah, Godot is very, um, it doesn't need a, a very big um, a very big workstation. Uh, as an example, the main developer of uh, of Godot Engine works on a very low-end computer. So, depending on the on the complexity and um, the need of graphics uh, of your of your production, then it, you you won't need a very important uh, very important uh, configuration. So, it's pretty. Uh, it, it runs perfectly well on very low-end PCs. So, so no need for high-end NVIDIA graphics? Not specifically, uh, except you're doing very uh, uh, important graphics, shader, shading, and uh, this kind of stuff. No. Okay. So some, of the Goda, and some of the people who make games for Goda have like Intel HD 3000 graphics on their like... Uh, oh, this is on-board graphics. Yeah, yeah. 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 like <laughs> ThinkPen X200 is more than enough to, to run Goda. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people are using very low-end graphics and almost uh, non-existent graphic cards to, uh, to make their games <laughs> and yeah in a simply Intel uh, Intel internal ch chipset works very well okay so that's accessible yes so uh, in, 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 in most well in a, a lot of, of, of adventure games uh, you have a story that goes from point A to point B and you have like just like a single ending and yep. not like branching path yeah does this is this like supported in 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 your framework or that's that up to you okay. that's up to you because uh, y you are the game designer so you have to design the game the way you want that's the pr the uh, the idea behind the esc uh, language that allows you to create Multiple endings, if you uh, if you want, depending uh, depending on the on the actions of the of the player. Uh, say if he finds uh, an item or not, uh, he gets one ending or, or the other. That's up to you to design this uh, when you're uh, when you're designing the game at the first time. Okay. Yes. That means that uh, if you have those tools in the engine, plus the ability to write some kind of branching scripts, you can do visual novels with. Uh, yeah, you can you can do this kind of branching using the uh, the ESC language, branching like in uh, in certain games that uh, came out very recently, and visual no novels. Uh, it's absolutely possible to uh, to make with ESC language. Yes. Okay.
Okay, guys, we're going to have to stop there. Thank you so much, and thanks for everyone.